it's Nicole and welcome back to another design with Nicole video today we are going to talk about watercolor backgrounds today I'm using some stamps from close to my heart as well as some gesso and some fun watercolor uh, inks by pink fresh studio so I've gone ahead and I've just applied some of this gesso to a textured cardstock background the reason you want to use the gesso is it's not going to allow your paper to absorb all the water that's in the watercolor paint so I'm just going to you know, I did a little sample here. I'm going to let, set that aside to dry um, and I'm going to continue on with some other items for my project. So I have some smooth white cardstock here and some archival ink from Close to My Heart and these really pretty butterfly stamps. So I'm just going to print a whole bunch of these um, butterflies in black and then part of the set also has a inside stamp um, to color the inside of these butterflies to give that watercolor like effect. You could certainly do the same thing with watercolor paints, but hey, if they're going to make a stamp and make it super easy, we should do that, right? So here's that inside stamp. You can see I've just chosen different colors of the rainbow, and I'm stamping the inside of the large, and then I did a few smaller uh, butterflies as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and I fussy cut a whole bunch in all different colors of the rainbow, and that's going to kind of go with my background. So I'm going to set those to the side. And by now my gesso is dry, so I'm ready to do the water coloring. So on my paint palette here, I have a red, a yellow, a green, a blue of the pink fresh uh, watercolor inks. And then I'm actually mixed, obviously, red and yellow together to make the orange. And they're going to mix the red and the blue together to make a nice purple color. So for four inks, I have all the colors of the rainbow. And from here, I'm just going over top of that gessoed background with the watercolor paint. You can see it's really really bright and vibrant. So I'm adding water after I do my strip of paint. I'm dipping my paintbrush into water, which is what those little bubbles are. And I'm just spreading the paint over top of each other so it blends the colors together really nicely. Dabbing off onto my paper towel kind of as I go, just so I don't have too much pigment or too much water on my brush. So no wrong way of doing this. I'm just making really random strips. Again, dipping my paintbrush into water to kind of make things flow and then going into another color of the watercolor paint. So really fun and really easy. I'm just doing a little sampling here. I ended up doing for my project a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock all the way across, but in the exact same manner where I started with red and worked my way all the way across to purple in the rainbow. You can use the paper towel here just to dab off any um, bulky areas or areas you don't really like how the paint mixed and then set that aside to dry. You can see mine's dry here and I've actually just trimmed it down to a four inch strip. I really felt like the watercolor, the whole sheet was just a little bit too much for me, but I really like how it's trimmed down. It kind of cleans it up a little bit and the gesso doesn't make the paper warp, so it's nice and flat as well. But you can really see that watercolor texture in the design there of the different colors. So now I have my fussy cut butterflies and I'm going to add my photo here. I've gone ahead and just backed my photo onto a mat of some simple black cardstock. That's just going to tie that black in from the butterflies and just ground the photo out around that all that color we have going on. And I'm just adding some tape runner adhesive to the back middle um, of those fussy cut butterflies. And then I'm going to go in later and add a little bit of foam adhesive to the back of the wings of the butterflies just to add that 3D dimension. So going across the, my page, just with where the watercolor is, I'm doing the same thing with these really pretty butterflies. So obviously I'm doing pink on the pink, orange on the orange, etc. And just kind of staggering my larger and my smaller butterflies across the vertical placement of the page. So here's some of that foam adhesive. This is a little bit of a lower profile foam adhesive. Um, so it does, it will just give a little bit of dimension, but nothing too, too bulky on your, on your page. So it'll hold those butterfly wings up, um, but so they won't get too crushed when you put them in a page protector. So I'm going to do that same thing behind each of the butterflies. And you'll see that I kind of, as I put these down, I wiggle them around a little bit until I have the right placement and I'm happy with where they're going. It's so really fun, really easy, and I really love that watercolor effect on the butterflies without even having to do any watercoloring whatsoever. So there's, that's a sign of great stamps. All right, so now I'm going to work a little bit more on the rest of my project once I get this last little butterfly stuck down. And I'm going to look for something for my title, um, a few embellishments, and I decided last minute that I wanted to fussy cut one more yellow butterfly Whenever I do a project like this, I kind of stamp or fussy cut out more than I usually think I need. Just because as you kind of get going, sometimes when you move things around, you need more um, 
it's easier to cut more, but sometimes you just want to have them done. So I like when it comes to something like this where I'm stamping out an image and fussy cutting, I usually do a few extra just to have on hand and worst case scenario, I have enough for another project. So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to grab some Vicky Boot and Thickers here. I love the sparkly, glittery shimmer on these, so I'm going to add a little bit of a title just below my watercolor background and then my photo. And then I decided I wanted to do a little more stamping, so I have these really fun, kind of almost like a handprint uh, letter font from Close to My Heart. I'm going to grab a quick tag here in orange that's going to kind of match where my title is going to go. I'm going to lay that here over top and that'll give me a space to do my stamping on versus just stamping right onto that white cardstock background. So I'll just use this tiny little letters or just a fun little font and get the title Be Still My Heart stamped out. Letters like this can go a long way. You can use these for a million different projects. So uh, perfect for little sentiments on a layout, not just for cards for sure. All right, so now that I have that stamped, it's just really time to finish off the rest of my project. I'm going to fool around with more ideas. You know, at this point, sometimes I don't really know what else I'm going to put on my page, but I knew I wanted to do all my embellishing in that rainbow kind of effect. So I'm going to add another tag here in yellow and just kind of layer that above the other. And then I'm going to start pulling in some other items besides tags onto my project. I did decide to add some black splatters of watercolor paint. These are also just from Pink Fresh. And I just did a tiny little tap with my round brush over top of my layout. And you can see I got a little bit of an oopsie there below my title. Um, sometimes you can take a paper towel and just suck that up, but this uh, watercolor really goes into the paper really easily. So I'm going to count that as an embellishment opportunity and grab some of their stickers and bits to kind of cover that little smudge up. You'll see that that will be the theme of my project is, is working in an embellishment opportunity. So as I work through here, I'm going to add some stickers that are kind of similar colors to the watercolor background. I'm really letting that watercolor be the guide for how I'm going to and what choices I'm going to use depending on the color. So I'm kind of working by color group. So I'm using this little blue label in the blue area the green photo camera in the photo area and this little yellow heart on my label sticker and just playing around with some smaller embellishments deciding what I want to put on my page. Then I kind of thought I wanted to fill in that bottom area underneath my photo a little bit so I have this fun sentiment by crepe paper I'm going to stick in there. I love these clear black and white text stickers. Perfect to just add on that white background. And then I found a few more little hearts I thought I might add. And I don't use enough purple very much, so I use the opportunity to take that purple heart and get that on there. And then I think I'm going to just finish off with a few wood buttons. And then do um, just a few around my page, and you'll see here how I correct an issue. So I noticed just as I was about to um, stick these really old rub-ons I had down that I smudged my watercolor paint. So I'm just letting that, I smudged it, and I'm just going to let it dry, and I'm trying to think of a way, to be perfectly honest, how I'm going to cover that up, because that's a pretty big smudge. Sometimes if you let the ink dry, you're able to kind of pick it off almost with a paper piercer, depending on how thick it is, or erase it with an eraser. Um, but I decided it wasn't completely coming off, but I would use this little flag um, to cover that up, so that works for me. So I'm just going to go ahead now. I got some wood buttons here with little enamel dots in the center. I'm going to again use some more of the rainbow colors to add these in. I kind of play around with the placement of some of these. I'm still going with that rainbow kind of color effect. So I'm going to scatter those throughout my page. And then I will move one butterfly over. I think it's a little too close to the edge. I did want another um, enamel dot wood button up at the top. And again, I smudged more watercolor paint. Probably what I should have done is wait till the end to do my watercolor marks. As you can see here, I made a really mess on the bottom of my page, but I was able to erase it off. I found my eraser was actually making it worse at first till I cleaned off my eraser. And then I was able to just erase my mark away um, because it was fairly light. It made easy work of, I was kind of, I got, kind of got lucky, but that would have been a great place to add some journaling. Anyway, here's how that watercolor background looks with those pretty, pretty butterflies. I really love how those butterflies look watercolor without any of the water. And I will definitely be making a watercolor background like this one again. So easy, so clean, and so much fun. 
Thanks for joining me this time. I'll see you again next month for another Designed with Video.